Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the must-have guns for the end of the world apocalypse uh, 2022. Okay, so this is an updated list. Um, I, I've done this video in the past, right? Uh, it's not something that I do annually, and the reason is because my opinions don't change that often, okay? Um, for a very long time, uh, my opinions on the five must-have guns were AR-15, a Glock, uh, a uh, AK-47, a Ruger 10-22, and a, uh, a pump shotgun, which quickly changed over to a Sega 12, uh, and then a Lynx 12, okay? So those, so that changed from a pump uh, to a uh, uh, to a Sega 12, and then to a Lynx 12. That was really the only change I had done, I had done to that list um, in the last 10 years, okay? So, uh, as of this year, as of, I don't know, I think a week ago, uh, I've, like, formally, in my mind, uh, changed that list. Um, and it's not something that I just do frequently. You know, it takes me a long time to change my opinions on a topic like that. So, on this table over here, on this side over here, we've got the winners. On that side over there, we've got some losers, okay? We're going to talk about it. Um, now, let's start with the number one must-have gun, okay? AR-15, okay? Uh, shouldn't be a surprise to you, most popular uh, gun in the United States, but it's not just a question of reliability. The gun is very reliable. It is battle-tested. Uh, the fact that uh, the parts are so common, right? Lots of people have the parts. Lots of people know how to build this gun. Um, lots of people know how to make repairs to this gun. That's the thing that puts this right at the top of the list. And then, of course, you've got the uh, uh, the, the great ballistics of the 5.56 round where you can shoot. You know, if, you, if you've got like a 50-yard zero, you can shoot all the way out to 250 yards without having... Uh, to, to worry about a holdover, right? Because if you have a 50 yard zero from zero distance all the way out to 250 yards, you know, you're either going to be like four inches low, four inches high. Uh, so, you know, all you got to do is put your dot on target, okay? Now, one of the things that you will notice on all these guns, right? Something they all have on them is they all have a hollow sun optic, okay? So shooting is a seeing thing. So the scene part is probably one of the most important things. It's probably right after reliability. Um, and the only reason why it's second to reliability um, is because, hey, at, at close quarters, you know, if you close your eyes and point your gun, you know, in the direction of somebody that's coming through a door and you put enough rounds in that direction, you're probably going to hit them. So that's why it's second to reliability. The gun has to work reliably. But the second thing is that you have to be able to aim it um, under all conditions, during sunny day, at night when it's pitch dark, at dusk, um, when it's foggy outside. So these are all conditions that I shoot in. Um, you know, most people only do sunny day shooting, like, in the summertime. You know, very few people are out when it's temperatures like this, you know. Even though it's pretty warm today, it warmed up to about, I don't know, 30 degrees. Like, I, I, don't, even, I, I don't even have my hood on. You know, I don't even have gloves on because to me, 30 degrees is warm, okay? It was like uh, negative 5 degrees the other night, okay? And yes, I was shooting when it was negative 5 degrees. Um, so, AR-15, top of the list, it's been there. Now, one of the things to to know is that the, um, the stock, I don't mean the stock, I mean the value of the AR-15 has gone up considerably since I made this list uh, 10 years ago because 10 years ago, uh, let me not say 10 years ago. Let me say back in um, um, 2008 to 2010, right? That Those are the years that... That's when, like, I first got into this game. During those years, I was in the process of becoming an instructor. I was in the process of, you know, starting to shoot these guns a lot more. Basically, that's when I, you know, I bought property and I was able to shoot on it. And I was able to really start testing these guns out. Um, back in 2008, 2010, um, ARs were generally reliable at that time. But they had, uh, you know, basically they were dragging behind them the history of the prior 10, 15 years. The problem with ARs is um, before uh, the anti-tilt followers on the magazines, okay, before we got anti-tilt followers on the magazines, the magazines would jam up the gun because they were 
they would roll frontwards, backwards, uh, and the guns would, would jam up. Um, so that kind of made them uh, a lot less reliable. But once we got the anti-tilt followers, uh, the ARs became a lot more reliable. Also, lots of companies started building them, started competing with each other. Um, also, in many cases, they're also buying parts from the, the same sources. I mean, they might, there's probably only like three or four, maybe five um, like sources out there that actually make the frames, the receivers. Um, so what's happening is uh, there, you know, lots of companies are buying the parts, lots of them being sold. There's a lot of, a lot of, of, uh, a feedback coming back to the companies. The companies are making corrections. So, you know, definitely by now, by 2022, all the bugs have been worked out. I mean, even if you buy a cheap AR, right? That, that, like, you know, even I, I think the cheapest AR I, I, I bought was my Palmetto, um, which I, I bought the upper and the lower. The thing cost me like $350. It was $120 for the lower, $220 for the complete upper. The, the whole thing was $350, okay? That's a very reliable gun, okay? Um, so even if you buy a cheap AR, it is very reliable. The, the, the worst, um, case I've seen with, uh, ARs is where the, the gas port, uh, is, is basically drilled the wrong size and there's just too much gas coming in or not enough gas. So, so usually it's a gas issue that presents itself really quickly. Um, and basically you were able to, you know, get this corrected with the company that you bought it from. Okay. Um, now the other thing that is great about ARs is... You know, they, um, they've been really good about, um, you know, switching over to the free-floating barrel system. I mean, yeah, I think at 100 yards, the free-floating barrel might be like a, a half-inch more accurate. Um, I mean, I, I've, I've hit like uh, one-inch groups with this gun. Um, but it, 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 that's not even the issue. I mean, the, 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 the guns, even a, even a three-inch group at 100 yards is, is, is probably decent for the end-of-the-world apocalypse, okay? Um so the thing I like about this gun, aside from the fact that you can hang, that you have places to put stuff, you get you have you know the M lock rails here where you can put your your sling, you can hang your lights over here, you can put this little rail over here. I, I use this as a hand stop, okay? But you can also you know you can also put a bipod on this. So the, the gun is very adaptable. Uh, the thing I like about this rail, right? So this is a 16 inch barrel with this skeletonized rail over here, makes it really light. Um, a couple of years ago. My, my kind of my standard thing for women is I would recommend an AR pistol because the barrel was a little bit short, short, shorter and it was a little easier for them to um, uh, to hold up. But with the skeletonized rails, the, the weight has really dropped. Um, so now I'm, I'm kind of leaning more towards just telling women to get the standard 16 inch barrels with the 12 inch rails skeletonized like this. The reason is because if you get the AR, if you get a shorter barrel, usually you have to put some type of a linear comp on there uh, to send more of the noise downrange. Otherwise, the gun is ridiculously loud. Okay, um, so my opinion now is, you know, I tell women just get a, a regular 16-inch barrel, get a skeletonized rail. It'll be a light enough, especially with the collapsible stock. It'll be a light enough so that you can shorten this up, bring it close to your body, uh, and you will comfortably be able to shoot this and then if there's a you know your husband or somebody like that they can also lengthen this out so they can shoot this so uh this is generally what i'm recommending now uh i've had lots of women shoot this at different ranges i go to they all shoot this very well very comfortably um so that's where we are ar 15 um top of the list must have them okay uh now oh one other feature about the ar 15 and this is the feature that knocked out the Ruger 1022. Okay. This feature knocked out the Ruger 22. With the AR-15, you can get a 22 conversion bolt. Okay. Um, which basically now gives that AR-15 the ability to shoot 22 long rifle because they're basically, you know, the, the diameter of both bullets is about 22% of an inch. Uh, and um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about. That's the reason why the Ruger 1022 got knocked off of the list. First, a couple of problems with the Ruger 1022. Um, first of all, these magazines, these 25 round BX 25 magazines, I've got lots of them. Um, I mean, they do tend to jam up sometimes. Now, I know that they don't jam up when, you know, a lot of people are going to say they don't jam up. Okay, but here's the thing. 
most people don't do as much shooting as I do under as many different conditions, weather conditions as I do. And uh, these do, they, 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 will, they will jam up. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is there's a little bit of a rock when they go in there. Um, sometimes that can cause a jamming problem. Okay, and it's not just like this one magazine. And it's not just this one gun, because I got another 1022, okay? There is a little bit of a rocking issue. So there, there is, so that's the one thing. These, these magazines are not as reliable as the 10 round, um, you know, rot rotary ones that this gun was originally designed to be shot with, okay? The other thing that, the only reason why this gun got knocked off the list um, is because it's, it, it's a pain in the ass to clean. Okay, taking, a, taking apart, um, first of all, if I, even if I didn't have uh, this this stock that's on there, this aftermarket stock, and I needed to put that there in order to have the collapsible stock so that children and women can shoot this 1022. Um, it, but the gun is a pain in the ass to to get into and to clean. Okay, it's a cleaning problem with the aftermarket um, furniture that I have on it. It's even that much harder. I generally try not to take the gun apart. I try to kind of like open this up, blow this out. I do everything I can to avoid uh, taking this gun completely apart, paying the buck. Uh, and the, and here's the thing, a lot of times if you take the gun apart, there's like this little pin that goes sides. If, you, if that falls out, especially if you're out here in the field somewhere, you drop that pin, that's it, the gun's done, okay? Um, so taking the gun apart uh, is, it, it, you know, it's very hard to clean this gun out here, not lose parts, okay? ar 15 you can open it up, you can clean it out here without losing parts. So that is a significant reason. That's why the Ruger 1022 got knocked off of the list. Um, these magazines, right? Now this is the CMMG 22 conversion bolt. This is way easier to clean than taking apart that Ruger 1022. Also these, these uh, uh, I th this is I think the Black Dog magazine design, even though this one's made by um, by CMMG, it's, it's very tough. The, the Black Dog ones, the plastic tends to be a little bit thinner, a little bit softer. These are very tough uh, magazines. Uh, these magazines are, I have found them to be more reliable than those magazines, okay? So it, it, took, a, it took a while for me to get there, right? Because uh, I've, I've had this now for I think about two years. Uh, but yeah, I've decided that 1022 is off the table on that table over there. Uh, AR-15 is able to do the job of both. It can be a 5.56 rifle, and it can also be a 22 rifle. And I get pretty good, pretty good, decent groupings out to 100 yards. Okay, uh, you're not going to get like the one-inch groupings I get with 5.56, but you'll get like you know within six inches, you'll get groupings and um, for hunting because the, the the purpose of having a 22 conversion bolt for your AR is basically end of the world apocalypse. You gotta be able to hunt. Um, you're going to most likely be, you know, there's a good chance you're going to be hunting uh, squirrels, rodents, small things like that, that, you know, you need a very small caliber like a 22. So that's why you, you have to have a 22, but now the AR-15 can do the job of both. It can be a fighting rifle and it can also be a, uh, uh, you know, a rodent hunting rifle when you put that 22 conversion bolt in there, okay? So moving on, uh, Glock 17 could also be a Glock... Uh, 19, okay, again, optic, must have an optic, uh, I, I train beginners all the time, I'm able to train beginners a lot faster when they got optics on the gun, I, experienced people, I see that they shoot better when they got optics, they may not believe it initially, but, you know, as they start getting more into it, they, they, you know, eventually they, they see that they are able to shoot better, especially under stressful circumstances, so, uh, again, the reason why this is number two on the list, okay, basically this is a backup to your AR-15, okay, uh, but it also has the same features as the AR-15 in terms of uh, the Glock 17, this Gen 3, the parts have expired, so there's lots of parts floating around out there. Uh, people have been building these Palmer 80s, right, so this is actually a Palmer 80, but it's basically a Glock clone. So it doesn't matter whether you've got, I don't, for, this, for the purpose of this video, I don't care whether you've got a factory Glock MOS or a Palmer 80 you built, as long as it's a Glock Gen 3. And again, Gen 3, because there's more parts out there. Um, people, there's lots of people out there that know how to build these guns. Now, you might ask me, oh, how about like a, a SIG 320? Um, 
or H and K or or FN or whatever, you know, that have you know guns that have or SIG, they got they got all they got a long history as very reliable guns. Yes, those are great guns, but when that gun breaks and all guns break, okay, um, and you come to me or your neighbor and you say, hey, fix my gun, you have they're not gonna have parts, they're not gonna know how to fix the gun. You show up to you 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 if you have a broken Glock Gen three, you'll be able to find somebody relatively quick. I think that that has both parts and knowledge to fix the gun. Or let me not say quick, but you, there's you you have a better chance of finding somebody that has parts and knowledge to fix your Glock Gen three. Okay, um, so that's why the Glock is on the list. This is unchanged. Okay, now the only difference, the only thing that's changed is that it's got to have an optic. Okay, it's got to be Glock MOS. Uh, don't show up with iron sights. Iron sights don't work very well at night. Um, and even if you've got like the true, the like the, the glow in the dark, the glow in the dark does not work at dusk or at in twilight. Okay, the glow in the dark sights you have to either be like pitch black, dark, okay, um, or bright so that you can actually see the sights. But if you've got glow in the dark sights on your gun, um, go you know go out when it's like. You know, starting just starting to get dark a little bit, you're gonna see where it's not dark enough to actually light them up. You're gonna see that you're gonna have a hard time uh, seeing those sights. Okay, so moving on. Now over here, I've got Palmetto PX9. This is new on the list. Okay, this was not on here before. This is replacing the AK47. Okay, uh, let me say this now. Put it down. This is not to say that. I don't think that the AK-47 is a great gun, okay? It's a great gun. Um, I'm certainly not selling it, okay? I think, uh, here's the thing. I bought this gun, I think, for some $500, okay? I wouldn't even sell this gun for $2,000. I probably wouldn't even sell it for $3,000, okay? Um, you know, it, it's really hard to replace these guns now. Um, so this gun's become more of a collectible that, that you know, even though it's a great fighting gun, I, I see this more as a collectible. And uh, like I said, it's, it's hard to buy these guns uh, they are out there. You you, pay, you gotta pay a lot more for it. Palmetto is making them. Uh, the problem that I have with the modern AKs, right, the ones that are being produced now, for some reason they're still not making them optic ready. Okay, so if you buy an AK-47, okay, you usually got, have to spend extra money to get a collapsible stock, and it has to be a collapsible stock, not the side folding garbage that doesn't help you, you know, until you actually open it up. Okay, but with this you can collapse this, and oh, the woman in your house can shoot this. Right, because you can pull this in tighter to the body, especially with an AK, which is more front heavy. You got to have the collapsible stock. Um, you got to have a rail up here where you can mount an optic. Optic has to go up here. It can't go on the dust cover. Dust cover is just not a stable platform. The ha Having it off the side mount over here, I have found that it raises up so high that now you got to put your jaw on the gun or you got to put a riser. Uh, again, it's adding expense. It's adding extra parts that you don't need. Um, you know, basically to get this gun combat ready so that it'll, be, it'll have a, a rail here where you can put a light, you know, be able to take a sling on the side over here, you know, put a, you know, basically you're going to end up spending another $200. So you're spending like whatever, let's say you get it from Palmetto, you, you paid $900 for this. Now you got to spend another $200 so that you can have the gun optic ready. Okay. It doesn't have an optic on it. it it's not going to be as usable uh, in stressful conditions. Okay. Uh, so again, great gun. I'm not getting rid of it. If I get the opportunity, I'm going to buy more of them, right? I have a bunch of these already. I want to get more. But this is not a gun that I feel that I can tell somebody that's, like, just getting into this game, right? Uh, you know, go out there and buy this gun right now. I can't say that. I can say get an AR-15, get a Glock. I can say get the Palmetto PX9, okay? A um, couple of reasons why, I reckon, why this gun is now on this list. First of all, it takes Glock Mag. It takes the same magazines and the same ammunition as your Glock 17 or your Glock 19, okay? That's a big advantage, having, having being able to take the same ammunition. Uh, the other thing is that a lot of the parts in here, like the trigger group, is the same as your AR-15. Um, you know, so, you know, a lot of the furniture is the same as the AR-15. If the uh, now here's the thing the bolt the bolt on AR-15 I mean you gotta have backup bolts you gotta have backup bolts for your for your AR because you know the the the, the bolts if you do if you shoot a lot they 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 can and they will break um, usually by you know by the time I get to uh, ten thousand rounds I have usually broken the 
the trigger group, some part in the trigger group, maybe it's the pins, uh, maybe the, 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 the sears have worn out um, because these are all lightweight parts, okay? So by the time I get to 10,000 rounds, usually I have to replace something in the trigger group and usually I have to replace something uh, in the bolt and that's, it might be the gas rings, it's, it's usually the extractor that's broken, maybe I broke the firing pin. So you've got to have extra parts. This gun was not meant to last forever, but it is a very usable gun and it's very easy to fix. Let's jump back to the AK-47 uh, for a second. A lot of people say, yeah, just get the AK-47. It will never break. Liars, <laughs> okay? I, I broke this re the recoil spring in this gun right here. I broke it at around 10,000 rounds, okay? Um, I also broke the, um, the, 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 the muzzle slant on it. Now, muzzle slant, that's not, you know, it, it cracked on me. Uh, it, that's not something that's necessary for the gun to work. But the recoil spring will, you know, the gun can't work without, the, without a... A recoil spring and this one just broke in half um so you, you can't say that the gun's gonna last forever uh it's a very durable gun okay uh but it does break now here's the thing some with the ar-15 when your bolt breaks you can just take any other bolt that's made for an ar-15 and just drop it in here with if the bolt on your ak-47 breaks uh that you know the the, the you have to headspace it the way you headspace the bolt Okay, and this is not something I've ever done. I'm not an expert in it, but the way I'm told is you have to basically take out the barrel pin and move the barrel back and forth to get the proper head spacing. I don't know how to do it. I don't have the tools to do it. Uh, you know, um, if the, uh, here's the thing. I said, okay, fine. And the reason I learned this because I was, in 2020, I was I wanted to get a backup bolt for my AKs. And I found out that, hey, you can't just drop in a, a bolt. I said, fine, let me just get a firing pin then. Well, it turns out that the firing pins that go into the AK, they don't, they're not all the same size. So you got to make sure that you got the right size firing pin uh, for your AK-47. So at that point, I said, forget it. If, if it breaks, at that point, I'll figure out what the right size is. Most likely, I'll just send it out to somebody, to a company that builds, it, that knows AKs and have them fix it for me. Uh, because I, I just don't know, you know, it's one thing if I know what parts to buy. The other thing, I, I don't know which parts to buy. So that's, that's the other thing that knocks out the AK. Going back to the Palmetto CX-9. So, the bolt on this, okay, uh, it's very simple because it's a straight blowback system. This works the same way as that Ruger 1022 uh, works. There's no rotating bolt. When you fire this, this comes straight back. Uh, the blowbacks are very rough on the gun, so you can break. The, I mean, I've broken the firing pins. Um, you know, you, I mean, you, you, you know, you, you, the gun vibrates a lot. The way I've dealt with that is um, th this gun comes standard with a four ounce buffer weight i've upgraded to an eight ounce buffer weight uh and the gun runs a lot more smoothly okay um so the other thing is that you know these things come optic ready right m lock rails so that you can put your lights on here and slings and all that stuff so it takes uh, the, oh if you break your extractor it takes the, the extractor is the same size as the one that goes uh in your ar-15 so the trigger group will, from the ar will drop in here the, the, the extractor, which is a vulnerable part, will drop in there. So, you know, the, the buffer system is off. You know, the buffer tube is the same. You can probably, uh, you know, I, I mean, you need, I mean, like I said, it takes an, it works better with an eight ounce buffer weight, but if you have to, you can throw the three ounce in there. Um, not that that would break or anything, but the, the point is that this gun is, takes a lot of parts from the AR-15, both internally and externally, like the optics are obviously the same, the flip-up sights are the same. You know, the the height, the 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 the, the line of the line of sight over your bore is the same. So that's the reason why this gun is now on this list. Now, this gun um, has a very very useful purposes. Number one, it's a very it's a great training gun. Okay, because the one thing I can do with this PX9 that I can't do with the AR is shoot steel up close, right, 15, 20 feet. I can shoot nine millimeter that close and not worry about a piece of that steel coming back and hitting me. Okay, I can't do that with the 5.56. Five, so it's a great training gun. Uh, it also has the potential to be a good hunting gun uh, for like, you know, for something, you know, obviously not as small as a, as a rabbit, right? The word rabbit, you probably use a 22. But here's the thing that a lot of people have not considered. In the, and this, <laughs> a lot of you guys are not gonna like this, but end of the world apocalypse, right? Um, the deer are all going to disappear, okay? They're going to be hunted to extinction almost like in no time. Or they're going to just disappear so deep into the forest that you'll never find them. 
So the deer are all gone, okay? Uh, the two sources, the two main sources of food are going to be one, other people, right? All right. Um, or, and dogs, dogs, cats. Um, dogs are probably going to, you know, are going to start breeding like crazy. Uh, we're talking about wild dogs. You know, I mean, the, the, the now domestic dogs are going to become wild and um, they're going to eat the, the human corpses. So they're going to have a food source, okay? They're going to multiply. There's going to be lots of dogs out here. Uh, people have been eating dogs for very long periods of time. Eskimos eat dogs, Chinese eat dogs. Um, so, so the nine millimeter would be a good hunting round for, you know, for, for catching dogs and eating them, right? And again, end of the world apocalypse. We, we got to be realistic here, okay? Uh, we've got to survive. Um, so, so the nine millimeter would be a good hunting round for, for something about that size, okay? Uh, moving on, shotgun. Originally, I had a pump on my list, and uh, then I switched it out to the Sega 12 because basically the semi-automatic is always going to be better than manual. When I train people under stress, I find that they short-stroke pump shotguns, okay? Uh, now, the shotgun is not so much for a self-defense purpose. That's more for a hunting purpose, um, and uh, but it does have the capability of also becoming a self-defense gun, okay? So, so you know, so, so it does have that capability. Um, the reason why I, I'm going with the, with the, with the semi-automatic, again, like I said, I find that people under stress short stroke pumps. Uh, people think that pumps don't break, don't, they do break. I mean, you know, if you shoot, as, if you do as much shooting as I do, I've broken pumps, okay? Pumps will break. Um, now, people ask, well, how about like other semi-automatics like Benilli's, right? Uh, very reliable. They, they, here's the thing. Uh, I've, I've seen a couple of people shoot Benilli's. Um, some, you know, semi-automatic. Sometimes they're very finicky with the type of ammunition that can go into them. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, they got this loading gate. Uh, and I've seen this happen many times. And what happens is when you push the shell in and it kicks it back, but the loading gate is down. Basically, the shell gets stuck between the loading gate and the top of your, and the loading gate and the top, uh, sorry, the loading gate, the top, the loading gate and your bolt. It gets stuck in between the two, and it's, it's really hard to get it out, okay? Uh, and I've, I've had that happen to me a couple of times when I was at, ra at different ranges, training people on their, on their Benillis, and the shell got kicked out like that, and it got stuck between the loading gate and the bolt, uh, and I, I spent so much time trying to, you know, get the gun open and get that shell out. So that's why I don't, I don't like Bellinis. In fact, I hate Bellinis, Benilis. I, I, hate, I hate them. I mean, I've, I've seen this problem enough times and, and, and had, uh, you know, busted my nuts trying to get the shells out of the, the, that jammed up situation that I really would never want to buy one of those. Okay? Um, obviously, I'm very prejudiced because I've had this experience, but it's a, it's a realistic experience. I mean, I've seen it happen numbers of times. Now, the... Um, the Lynx 12, okay, again, you can put this, so here's the thing, the, for my AK guys out there, the AK still lives, right, it lives in the Lynx 12, it's on, it's, it's, it's off my list, my, my, my must-have gun list, but it's, you know, it's on that table over there, but it's also still here, um, so nice thing about it, you are able to put an optic on it, you're able to put a collapsible stock on this, um, detachable magazines, you know, optic, put a, a sling on it, uh, I put a rail over here, put a light on it. Um, so yeah, you gotta have a shotgun. The shotgun, you know, because you can you can shoot lots of different types of ammunition. You can use birdshot to hunt birds, hunt rabbits. You know, things that run fast on the ground. Birdshot is great for that. Um, you can also use buckshot for turkeys. Uh, you can use slug, right? Uh, you can sl with the slug now you can you know because that also takes that takes two and three quarter inch she uh, shells and also three inch shells okay you just gotta make sure you adjust the gas valve on that um so now with the with the slugs you've got the ability to go after deer you can go after even much larger game if it's available okay um main the issue that i have with the lynx 12 is the um uh the quality control okay the ones that i have the one, i've got three of them they've all been working great okay i have heard of cases where people have gotten the Lynx 12s and they don't work. So once you get it, you really got to test it out, you know, while it's still within that warranty period, basically, where you just got it from the gun shop and you have the ability to go back there and, and tell them to replace it. Um, but once you get it working, uh, the thing works. It works good. You know, initially, you got to have your, 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 your shots got to be at least 
1,200 feet per second. Um, if it doesn't work at 1,200 feet, bump it up to 1,300 feet. Uh, eventually, as the spring, uh, as the recoil spring wears in, I mean, I've shot that with 1145. Um, so that's that's my list. Um, four must-have guns for 2020: AR-15, a, a Glock, the Palmetto PX9, nine millimeter, and the Lynx 12. Okay, those are my those are my guns, and also the 22 conversion bolt for your AR. That's this almost counts as a gun in and of itself. Okay, uh, so we've really we I guess I don't know I guess we're down to four guns the, the, you know the, the commercial bolt is really not a gun it's a bolt so we went from five must-have guns to four must-have guns and I'm not saying don't have other guns I mean I've got those guns I, I'm keeping those guns I got lots of other guns I'm not saying don't have other guns uh, but I would tell people these are the guns that you should have first and this is weighted because uh, I'm gonna tell people get two AR-15s get two Glocks okay you know, then get one Palmetto, one Lynx 12, and then, you know, figure out what you want to get after that. So uh, drop some comments below. Uh, if you disagree with my list, by all means, you know, let me know. Tell me what your favorites are. Uh, if there's anything you think I should consider, you know, put in the comment section. Um, if you're not a member of the channel, hit the bell, you know, subscribe and hit the bell button so you get the notifications. I'll talk to you guys soon.